High School has led his team to two Philadelphia Public League titles in the last three years. And Rice is on target to break Wilt Chamberlain's all-time Philadelphia High School scoring record this season. Sit back, relax, and get ready to watch the stars of tomorrow. in the old building tonight. King James is in town and everybody wants to have a look. CNA Sports is delighted to bring you LeBron James and St. Vincent St. Mary against North Philadelphia's own Strawberry Mansion High School. Hey, a very pleasant good evening to you watching. I'm John Gurevich alongside Matt Gukas. Everybody is buzzing about LeBron James. And let's talk about what makes this player so special. Well, John, he's got a man's body already. He doesn't turn 18 for another week. He's got the skills, he's got the fundamentals, and he has the mental approach that you don't expect to see from a high school player. If he has a weakness, he's a little bit streaky from the perimeter, but you wouldn't know when you look at his percentages. And this is what he likes to do best, make the pass to teammates. He's a terrific passer. He has outstanding court vision, and he anticipates play. And when he needs to, he's got obviously the size to go in there and mix it up inside. And look at these numbers. Obviously very impressive. The 27 points, the 12 rebounds. He probably would like to have more than five assists a game because that's what really separates him from the rest of the pack. Now, this is a guy that craves attention and the spotlight. And let's face it, John, he's been getting plenty of that. Now, on the other side, Strawberry Mansion comes at you with 6-1 Maurice Rice, a guy with a good all-around game and a guy who could flat-out score. And he's about to break Wilt Chamberlain's scoring record. And he said, hey, after all, you know, he was a pretty good player. I'd say Maurice Rice is a master of the understatement. But this guy's got a terrific offensive game. He can shoot it from deep. And he has what's so difficult for any basketball scorer, and that's that little in-between game. Can get in the lane, get off the shot before the bigger players come to him. Here he goes around the defender and pulls up just in time. So he is very close to Will Chamberlain now, trailing by 80 points. On the other hand, he is opposite from LeBron James. He does not care about the attention. He would love to play in anonymity. And his coach, uh, Gerald Hendricks, saying they would love to get that scoring record over with, so they go about the business of trying to get another public league title. Tough task ahead for Maurice Rice and the Strawberry Mansion team. This is, you know, in essence, one of the best teams in the city against one of the best teams in the USA. Coverage continues on CN8. Stay with us. If you liked watching Kobe, Dewan, Eddie, and LeBron, then don't miss Scholastic Classic 2 at Villanova February 2nd, featuring the nation's top two guards, Friend Central's Mustafa Shakur and Abe Lincoln Sebastian Telfair. 
as well as many other top teams and players in the country. That's Scholastic Classic 2 at Villanova, February 2nd. Call 215-546-1608 for more information. I'm playing in the next Classic, February 2nd at Villanova. Don't miss it. Philadelphia taking on the world tonight in a sense. Maurice Rice and Strawberry Mansion against the team ranked number nine in the USA. St. Vincent, St. Mary with LeBron James. Every seat in the palestra is taken. All right, let's go courtside now and join CNH's Greg Murphy. Greg? Well, guys, the, the great thing about potential is that everybody has an opinion on it. Nowadays, you can't talk about basketball and not talk about LeBron James. We asked one former NBA general manager, John Nash, what he thought about the big guy. Well, his talent certainly is that similar to uh, Kobe Bryant, Kevin Garnett, and, you know, maybe even Magic Johnson or Oscar Robertson. He's one of the premier young players of all time, and uh, there's no question he's the best amateur player right now, will be the top pick in this year's draft. Well, he's a very, very well-rounded basketball player. I think his greatest gift is his court vision. He's a terrific passer. He's blessed with a, an incredible body. He's got an NBA man's body at 6'7", 235 pounds. He can uh, put the ball on the floor. He rebounds, he defends, and he can score. And I think he'll do nothing but get better because his perimeter game will improve. He can shoot it deep, but uh, that's probably the weakest part of his game right now. At another goal. Well, on the other side of the ball, Strawberry Mansion, of course, has their own superstar. It is Maurice Rice. He's not getting the national attention that LeBron James is getting, but here locally in Philadelphia, everybody knows his name. We talk to NBA legend Sonny Hill. His strength is his mind. He's mature beyond his years. His physical strength that he uses to his advantage and his knowledge of how best to play the game of basketball with his teammates. When you're looking at Maurice Rice, he does not specialize in any phase of the game. Even though he's going to break Wilt's record, you think, well, he's a great scorer. Maurice, again, when you think about him, you think about the fact that he's a prolific scorer, which he is. But really, he's an all-around basketball player. Well, we are just minutes away from tip-off here at the Palestra. St. Vincent, St. Mary, and North Philadelphia's Strawberry Mansion. Just minutes away, it's high school basketball on CNA. Stay with us here in Philadelphia. Hey, basketball fans, if you want to improve your game, then you need to go to the Lower Marion Basketball Camps. Improve your handle, shooting, and overall skills. Taught by Greg Downer, Kobe Bryant's high school coach. Sign up now to reserve your spot. Call 610-667-2650. Hurry, space is limited. Hi, I'm Coach Downer, head basketball coach at Lower Marion High School. Please join us for three great sessions of Lower Marion basketball camps in the summer of 2003. In Philadelphia, John Gurevich, Matt Gukas, and Greg Murphy. We are just about set to go take a look at the starting lineup. First for St. Vincent, St. Mary of Akron, Ohio. LeBron James, you know, Corey Jones, the two guard. Drew Joyce, the point guard. Very good forward, Romeo Travis, and the center, Sheon Cotton. And then for Strawberry Mansion, Maurice Rice, the point guard, Devin Mead, Tracy Worley, Brian D Draper, and Delton Morgan Hines form the front line. The teams are out on the floor, and we are just about set to go. There is Maurice Rice, wearing uniform number 21. His team, seven wins and one loss. Their only loss at St. John Newman a couple of weeks ago. And there is number 23, LeBron James, St. Vincent, St. Mary, at five up and none down. The opening tip is controlled by Strawberry Mansion, and we are underway. Kind of a little curious to see how the crowd responds here to this ball club. They already responded to the nice crossover move by Maurice Rice. It looks like they're going to respond to everything. <laughs> this is a sold-out palestra, and as you may be able to sense, a very active crowd on hand. All right, Drew Joyce, the St. Vincent point guard, the coach's son, passing it over on the left here to Corey Jones. Here is LeBron James, going to try a three, put it off the back of the rim. Devin Mead, the rebound on the run. Strawberry Mansion at 7-1, and one, one of the top teams in the city of Philadelphia against the number nine team in America, according to the USA Today poll, St. Vincent, St. Mary of Akron, Ohio. Tracy Worley out on the perimeter. Good player here. Iris trying to get up, put a lot of pressure on, trying to fluster Strawberry Mansion, showing a lot of patience. 
The air ball put up by Maurice Rice, and then the ball knocked out of bounds, and Maurice Rice looking a little bit yeah. tight and early going. Well, I, I asked his coach before the game, Gerald Hendricks, how he might react to something like this with this kind of a crowd and this kind of a scene. He said, well, you know, this is one of the reasons why he scheduled so many away games this year to try to get them used to hostile environments. So this is, I guess, a combination hostile environment, but it should be a friendly one to Strawberry Mansion. We are in Philadelphia. <laughs> Again on the baseline, LeBron James buries it from about 16. Coach Gerald Hendricks will throw a lot of different defensive looks at LeBron James and company. And they'll throw a lot of zone up there until they start making some shots. They think if James has a weakness, it is that outside shots, but he's one for two so far. Yeah, and he shoots 51% from the field. Here's pressure in the backcourt. Sheon Cotton winds up with the ball. LeBron is high jam. I'm kind of looking around at the crowd. Of course, St. Vincent and St. Mary brought a lot of their own fans, but uh, maybe about a, a third of the building reacted. I, I had a feeling, John, once James would get into his act in his game that the crowd might turn very quickly in his favor. This place is buzzing. <laughs> Hey, interesting that St. Vincent, St. Mary throwing up a full court press to open the game. And again, broken play. And Chris James is too quick, too active. No kind of defense could react to that. And he showed his ability to take that ball the other side of the rim, still extend and finish with the slam. Rice inside. The shot was blocked by, Lebr by uh, Romeo Travis inside. And so St. Vincent, St. Mary gets it back with a four-point lead. At number 24, Romeo Travis has been with LeBron James way back since fourth grade they play very well together they generally get on opposite sides of the floor from one another and react to each other on missed shots and things like that now that's the point guard the coach's son heaving up what a 25 footer dad saying come on <laughs> that couldn't have been the right play but uh, maybe it was drew joyce the second the father of the coach he looks like he's coaching about his 75th game he looks like he's worn down and it's really from all the outside stuff going on around the team i said how you hold up coach he said oh it's a little tough he said but this is what the kids want this is where they want to be this is what they want to do they love what they're going through this experience like first lebron james eats it for lunch gerald hendricks in his 21st season coaching strawberry mansion has had a lot of success of late two public league championships in the last three years and a number of real good basketball players coming through strawberry mansion in the last four or five years Early going here, St. Vincent, St. Mary leading Strawberry Mansion 4-0. See the referees on hand for tonight's game. Ball inbounded and taken away from Drew Joyce. Tracy Worley winds up with the ball, and here's Devin Mead. Five and a half left in the first quarter. We're early on. Worley got inside, blocked from behind, slapped away by LeBron James, but a foul from in front. And this should send Tracy Worley to the line. Fouled in the act of shooting by Corey Jones, who collects his first personal. There's a, you can see James on the outside. He's actually guarding Maurice Rice, no doubt wanting to take the challenge on a guy that scores 26 a game, about to break Will Chamberlain's record. But the one thing that might do is take James away from the basket. So Rice is going to have to recognize that and maybe do a little bit more ball handling on the perimeter, and it could be effective. But LeBron James so quick, even though he got back in there, blocked that shot cleanly. Worley already fouled on the play. Worley missing the first, makes the second, so Manchin is on the board. Four to one in the early going, and now the Knights will show some full court pressure. This is Romeo Travis, finds Sheon Cotton in the middle, a big center to LeBron James, a cutting yeah. Corey Jones. And, and the crowd does not react to that, John. That's a terrific pass, and that's one reason why you might not want to go full court or three-quarter trap, because now you're giving open floor to LeBron James. That was actually a very, very nice pass. I'm surprised the crowd didn't react better. A block shot by Romeo Travis, and then Travis at the offensive end threw it away. Delton Morgan Hines with the pick, and Devin Mead has the ball for Manchin. About three minutes in at the sold-out Palestra. Ball put off the rim, no good. Tyrell Mathis with the missed shot. He had just come in. Back the other way, Drew Joyce cranks up a three, missed again. And then in the rebounding setup, 
Delton Morgan Hines getting tangled up with Romeo Travis and a foul on Travis of St. Vincent St. Mary. Well, John, obviously a whole lot of people saw LeBron James on TV last Thursday in their game against Oak Hill, and obviously he was extremely impressive with his play and his statistics and everything like that, but there is something different and something special about seeing a talent like this in person, and he already sees different things that you miss by seeing on TV. Just his mood now. He's just everywhere, and... and, and <laughs> he just dumped that ball without looking. How about that? But the, the ball's going the other way. Yeah. But again, he, he just reacts to the game so well. That's just an easy steal for him. Sometimes he'll just pick up any man defensively, communicate with his teammates, go in and get the defensive rebound, flick the pass ahead. All things that, you know, that that's when you see. People talk about the comparisons of the, of the Magic Johnson, the Oscar Robertson. That's the, those are the kinds of things those players did when they were pros. Inside, Tyrell Mathis. Mansion's got its first bucket at 6-3. to three. Out midway through the first quarter. Drew Joyce brings it across the line. He's the point guard. Corey Jones at the two guard. Sheon Cotton's the 275-pound center. And then Romeo Travis and LeBron James round out the starting five. A third or fourth different defensive look now put up by Strawberry Mansion. And St. Vincent, St. Mary, not in any hurry. Just kind of move the ball around, and eventually they're going to get it to that guy. And he's probably going to make something happen. Mansion in a zone. A little pass in the corner to Travis. There's Cotton. Jones driving through a wide open lane. That is way too easy. That's maybe why Corey Jones is uh, shooting 59% from the field. He does it mostly from the perimeter. That's way too easy. Interesting that uh, St. Vincent, St. Mary coming in here as a big favorite and yet opening up in a full court press. A lot of times you see the underdog try to go to a full court press, but here's here's Goliath pressing David. Yeah, but I, I think that's because St. Vincent, St. Mary doesn't want to give Strawberry Mansion any feeling of life, any feeling of hope. They don't want this crowd to get behind them, so they, they want to take the play away from them, force some turnovers, get out and get some dunks, get the crowd in their favor, which could happen. Mm -hmm. James out beyond the arc, drives in behind the head. Corey Jones, left corner, this is a three ball, it's good. <laughs> now this kid shoots 64% for three-point range, and, and now they're going to blow the whistle and say, keep the, keep the ball in Strawberry Mansion's hands. Uh, now, now watch this pass. He, he was going to go behind his back, and then in mid-leap, saw that he couldn't do it, so just flipped it over the top of his head. It's a little special, John. Strawberry Mansion gets a timeout. There's Drew Joyce, the second head coach of St. Vincent, St. Mary. A 30-second timeout here with 3.04 left in the first quarter. And in the early going, St. Vincent, St. Mary out to a quick eight-point lead at 11-3. Take a look at guys who, over the last few years, have gone from high school to the NBA. And then further down the list, Daryl Dawkins, who did it, what's it, like 30 years ago, 25 years ago. 1976, 77, yeah. I believe, or 75, 76. And then really, Actually, yeah. when uh, when Kobe Bryant came out from Lower Marion, it seemed to open the floodgates and, and begin a new generation of high school kids coming to the NBA directly. Well, you look at Kobe Bryant, he came with the Lakers, who already had a very good team with Shaquille O'Neal. No, Shaq was just coming, but Eddie Jones and Nick Van Exel, so he didn't get the playing time that maybe another rookie would get. Also, Jermaine O'Neal went to a very strong Portland team, especially their front court, so he was there four years and never really got a crack at playing any kind of meaningful playing time. All right, Manchin breaks the press here. They are down by eight points in the early going. We have about three minutes left in the first quarter. Tracy Worley. 6'4", Jr. Here's Devin Mead, the point guard. Worley. Now Delton Morgan Hines. Yeah, Delton Morgan Hines can take uh, LeBron James when he has him, but LeBron keeps moving around. You know, a lot of times you, you, you see that, uh, like with a, a middle linebacker in football, you don't know where they're coming from. He just guards whoever he feels like guarding. And even though he, he's been criticized somewhat for his defense, I think it's because he just has such a feel for the game and gambles so much and knows that he can turn it on whenever he wants to or has to. Maurice Rice, who's been very quiet so far. Now Morgan Hines in the right corner, put a foot on the sideline, stepped out of bounds, turned it over. 
Yeah, obviously, Strawberry Mansion is not going to be able to afford those kind of uh, careless mistakes. They're going to have to make every possession a meaningful one and, and use some clock, get a good shot, maybe get uh, St. Vincent St. Mary a little bit antsy and get them to overcommit, might get an easy shot. Corey Jones in the right corner, Drew Joyce. Now LeBron has it out on the left wing. It's Maurice Rice and LeBron James. Jones in the left corner, buries a three. And he can step out and make the three. Yeah, a terrific outside shooter. And, and, and again, I don't want to overemphasize everything that LeBron James is doing, but John, you see so many little things that he does. Just, just that little snap pass. You say, well, you know, anybody, that's just a two-hand chest pass. But right in the tee, right where the guy could catch the ball and shoot it, they got a chance to play with Ernie D. Gregori. He used to do that to play. Embarrassing. You, you know, I gave it to you. You wish he would throw it down around your ankles once in a while because when you catch it there, you're supposed to make every shot. A couple of changes made in the St. Vincent lineup. There's a pass knocked out of bounds by Corey Jones. Mansion inbounding. Big court on the left. There is Maurice Rice, who has yet to score. And they've got to get him a good shot. Now they've got James on him. See if he uh, tries to take him off the dribble. And does. <laughs> or get taken off the dribble by James. Me threw it between the hands of Delton Morgan Hines, yeah. and Manchin loses an opportunity. Probably, I, I think Maurice Rice's best shot when he, when James is on him is give the ball up to the, to the point guard and then get down on the baseline and then run off some screens and see whether or not LeBron James wants to chase him off those screens. Maurice Rice 0 for 3, and he's got a turnover in the early going here. St. Vincent St. Mary leading by nine. All put up and in by Willie McGee, sixth grade senior, who's come in off the Irish bench. Big donut in the middle of that zone, mainly because the uh, Strawberry Mansion Ball Club so concerned about James inside. Morgan Hines inside and one. Delton Morgan Hines, a, a movie star name, 6'6 senior, and a good solid game. A little pressure in the backcourt, and the Knights have to take advantage of those few openings that they're going to get. As the Irish are a little bit slow getting back on defense, it'll help Strawberry Mansion if they can get some of those layups. That's what Maurice is right is going to have to get to open up that basket for him so some of those jumpers will come a little easier. Morgan Hines completes the three-point play. He's got five points, and it's 16 to 8. David McFarland, number five, has come into the Strawberry Mansion lineup. A little pressure in the backcourt. Willie McGee bothered in the backcourt. They're going to say a foul on Maurice Rice. Right, right now, LeBron James is screaming at his good buddy, Romeo Travis, why didn't you throw the ball ahead to me? And that's what leaders do. And, and, and the leaders that are outstanding players can get away with that because they've got the respect of their teammates because his teammates know what the heck he's talking about. Here's Weems stepping up just inside the foul line, and the rebound to Terrell Mathis. Up ahead to Maurice Rice on the move. One on four, so he'll wait for help. And kick it to the point guard here, David McFarland. 15 seconds left in the first quarter. Mansion down by eight points. Ball in the hands of Rice in the right corner. Morgan Hines kicks it way out to McFarland with three seconds. McFarland against LeBron James. And the air ball has the horn sound. So we are one quarter complete. And it was all St. Vincent, St. Mary. As Corey Jones scored 10 points, LeBron James had four and helped make it all happen. A 16 to 8 first quarter lead, second period coming up. Well, as you can see, there are definitely some marketing opportunities surrounding some great players. LeBron James has his own T-shirt that you can buy here at the game today. And I'll tell you what, a lot of the proceeds are going to charity, but a 17-year-old in a T-shirt. Now yeah, you make the decision, guys. <laughs> All right. St. Vincent, St. Mary leading 16 to 8. There has been uh, a lot of hype yeah. around LeBron James, and there will be more as uh, time goes on. A lot of folks are spotting the uh, marketing opportunities at the time you're talking about the a talented guy like this who has captured the imagination obviously of a lot of media people writing mostly positive definitely all positive about his ability to play the game 
But a lot of people questioning all the circumstances surrounding this uh, magical mystery tour that his team is on. Willie McGee scoring off the uh, rebound. It's 18 to 8. And again, pressure. And here's a steal by LeBron James. The full court press has really bothered Strawberry Mansion. A spinning Willie McGee is called for traveling. <laughs> And Strawberry Mansion takes over. LeBron James again. He, did, he does a lot of talking out there. He barked at his little buddy Drew Joyce. And they are, I think, the guys that he's been around so long are the guys he feels he can really jump on the most because they understand him. Up ahead to Delton Morgan Hines with James back. No foul called as James knocked it away cleanly. And St. Vincent, St. Mary comes back the other way. Here's James, kick it cross court to Brandon Weems on a three. And, and LeBron James would, would make the case of, this is why you should pass the ball to me, because I don't really care if I ever shoot it. I'm going to make another play for one of you fellas. Because he looks like he, he's always thinking pass first and make a play and make a good play. Now he's passed for some jump shots, but they've been good rhythm jump shots for his teammates. Boy, Strawberry Mansion has just been completely yeah. unable to get into any kind of offense at all. Well, well, well they're obviously they're intimidated, I think, just by the talent and, and in some cases the size of LeBron James, Romeo Travis, and, and what they can do inside. And the fact that Strawberry Mansion, they can't get a good look for Maurice Rice. And let's face it, it's the guy that gives him 26 points a game. They, they depend on him to score points, and he can't get a, a sniff. He has not scored anything so far tonight, and that has been one of the stories. See James getting positioned down low inside, but can't get him the ball. Now Travis, and a traveling violation on Romeo Travis. <laughs> I'm having fun watching LeBron James there again. He's getting on Romeo Travis. Why he won't dump the ball down to the baseline? And Romeo Travis, said, my fault, my fault. And he goes, yeah, I know. Well, three on two develops. Terrell Mathis driving and LeBron James standing in. And they give James the benefit of the doubt. And Terrell Mathis is called for the charge. Yeah, and it's just a terrific defensive play. He gets there in plenty of time, takes up position, gives a little ground to make sure he doesn't take the brunt of the hit. I'm a believer, John. He does everything <laughs> so far. But keep in mind, he's doing this against high school players. And he's clearly at the top of, the, of that realm, no question about it. David McFarlane, the backup point guard, takes it across the midcourt line. All right, see if Manchin can get something going. They're down by 13 points. This a 7-1 team that is defending Philadelphia Public League champion. And this is Maurice Rice missing, but the rebound put in by Terrell Atkins. 6'3", senior, 21-10. Strawberry Mansion almost going exclusively now in these settings with, with the zone defense. They probably don't feel they've got the man-to-man -man ability to stay with St. Vincent, St. Mary. Oh, definitely needed that. Maurice Rice has to get that lid off the basket. Middle of a three-on-one break, and Rice could not finish. Now James the oh! Eyes to the right. Ball whipped to the left. And the layup for Romeo Travis. And a little more of the crowd to Palestra starting to really appreciate that part of his game. Three-point shot now up and off the side of the rim. Barely. Missed by Tracy Worley. And St. Vincent, St. Mary down court. Drew Joyce is not afraid to shoot from anywhere. LeBron James, the baseline follow in and out. Rebound, Delton Morgan Hines. And here's Maurice Rice asking for a timeout. He has struggled. Maurice Rice coming into the game just 80 points away from Will Chamberlain's all-time high school scoring record. You know, LeBron James able to find that, that open teammate because for a player like that, the game is almost slow motion. They, they can see two, three, four seconds ahead of everybody else where the openings are, and he has a good feel and anticipation of where his teammates are going to be. So on that catch, he doesn't even have to think about anything. It's just almost a touch pass, just the catch and the deliver where so many basketball players, of course, want to catch the ball 
ball and look for their opportunity and consequently catch it and hold it and slow everything down. When he's a pass first player, it's the other way around. He's thinking of pass it first and then if things don't work out, I'll become a scorer. It's a lot of the way that Oscar Robertson used to play basketball that way. He would, he would look around a pass and, and then, of course, he had the ability to go get any shot, kind of shot he wanted when uh, all else failed. See uh, Maurice Rice with the 2,127 career points. Unfortunately for him and his team tonight, that is the number he came into the game with, and that remains the number he has in his career at the moment. He has not scored this evening. And again, he's just standing around now on the perimeter, and that, that, that's not going to get it done. He's not, he can't be used to going one on one with a 6 no. 8 well, all world future NBA. -er. No, and, and what he you know, should be thinking about doing is you know, moving without the ball to, you know, make, I don't think you're going to tire out LeBron James by any means. He looks like he can play about five games a night, but just get him on the move where he just might get bored of chasing him around. Offensive foul away from the ball on Preston Sims of St. Vincent St. Mary. Delton Morgan Hines muscling inside, but. A foul on 6'5 junior Preston Sims. Very quickly picks up his second. Delton Morgan Hines has been the uh, best looking of the Strawberry Mansion Knights tonight. 6'6 six, six senior come in averaging about 15 points per game, and he's delivered five so far tonight. LeBron James and his coach Drew Joyce having a little conversation, and uh, you know, Drew Joyce has said a number of times that uh, he is coachable. He will question a lot of things because he, he has such a good feeling. He doesn't mind being questioned because he, he generally feels the question is a good one. And he also says, and his other coaches have said, he's the kind of player that you tell him something once and that's it. He's got it. He understands the concept and you don't have to go back to it. Morgan Hines, two for two at the line. He's got seven and it's 23 to 12. A little half-court trap coming now from the Strawberry Mansion defense, and LeBron James easily skips it on the left to Corey Jones. Way across on the right, and now into the hands of LeBron. There's Jones out on the left wing, just back into the lineup, has a game-high 10 points. LeBron straight on three, and he's really not looked that good with his perimeter shot. Now, the ball put up and in by Marcus Johnson off the bench, and a foul call to give Johnson a chance for a three-point play. There's LeBron James. You know, John, his shots have been right there. Obviously, he's not shooting a good percentage from outside, but uh, again, the Strawberry Mansion defense inside just... Uh, of falling apart on way too many occasions and here again on the missed free throw so Cheyenne is it or Sheehan? Sheehan Cotton he takes up a lot of space there he's mostly has a future in division one football oh. nice move by McFarlane the near steal by Travis up ahead Mathis intimidated by LeBron James and then the loose ball scramble winds up in the hands of LeBron he is a presence <laughs> on the court. How about, how about, it wasn't an eye-high dribble. It was an over-the-head dribble. <laughs> That's the highest dribble I think I've ever seen without being called for a violation. <laughs> St. Vincent, St. Mary turning it over. Manchin will get the basketball back. No harm, no foul. And James in the back of this uh, zone defense here, playing a little possum, trying to get uh, Maurice Rice to throw a long pass so he could pick it off. Instead, but Romeo Travis picks it. Good pass inside again, and then the finish by Marcus Johnson. <laughs> Strawberry Mansion has just been unable to compete with the St. Vincent and St. Mary full court press. And the look away from LeBron James, and it's almost uh, it's almost redundant to say good pass by LeBron James because just about every pass he throws has a purpose. Uh, he, he just doesn't willy-nilly throw the ball around. He has an idea of what he wants to do with the ball and generally delivers it right on time. Marcus Johnson hit with the first personal foul for him tonight. And this is David McFarlane at the line. One and one in effect now. And so McFarlane at the line to shoot the one and one set. Rattles in the first. Now you would have thought with uh, St. Vincent St. Mary's win over Oak Hill, who, if I'm not mistaken, John, was rated number one in the country yes. that, that Thursday ago when that game was played. And now they're both nine and ten. I thought that uh, the Irish would move up in those standings.
but uh, they're going to be seen quite a bit more as this season progresses in some rather large venues and of course on uh, some pay-per-view and on some television. Yeah, they've had the opportunity to get scheduling against some of the best high school teams in the country. And the ball tipped in by Romeo Travis. And, and anyone who's ever played sports, he, there's, there's nothing you like more than playing the best competition you can possibly handle. And that's a great opportunity for this team. Morgan Hines puts it in the hands of Mathis. He sees James in front, loses the ball. And St. Vincent St. Mary's comes the other way. The rebound jammed in by Travis. He hits a pretty good player, too. An excellent offensive rebounder. And showed it right there. You know, and again, this obviously is the LeBron James show, but this team is more than that. They've got some nice pieces here, and they play very well together. Strawberry Mansion, a good, solid basketball team, and Gerald Hendricks and company have been unable to do anything that looks good or solid tonight. A 30-second timeout here with 2.03 left in the second quarter. And this has been one of the best parts of uh, St. Vincent St. Mary's game is getting on the offensive board. They've already got 12 second-chance points to just two for Strawberry Mansion. Consequently, the 20-point lead. Take a look at the high school top 10, at least according to USA Today, which has become accepted as the authority. And you see St. Vincent St. Mary's number nine. Their next game, if you look up at number six, that's the next game they have. They're going to play it at Ohio State's 18,000 seat gym, Brookhaven against St. Vincent St. Mary. And then the next one on the schedule for St. Vincent St. Mary's on January 4th will be against number four, Modern Day from Santa Ana, California. And that game will be at Pauley Pavilion on January 4th. So two big tests coming up for St. Vincent St. Mary. And John, of course, a lot of the naysayers are saying, well, why are these high school kids traveling around the country almost like a you know, barnstorming professional team? Uh, supposedly, they're only going to miss four days of school throughout this whole uh, whole basketball season and of course a lot of people are worried about where's all this money going and supposedly it is going all to the uh, the general fund not to the athletic department of st vincent st mary but the uh, the general fund to uh, help support the school john gervich matt gukas greg murphy on hand cna delivering you coverage from the sold out palestra of lebron james who's got the ball and the dish and the layup but take that one away a traveling violation against big Sheon cotton The press continues. A 20-point deficit for Strawberry Mansion, and still they look at the full-court press. Devin Mead, their point guard, and now they set up on the offensive end, and they get double-team trapping action in the corner. And a foul called here against the Irish, and this will get a one-and-one -one for Strawberry Mansion. Foul is on Sheon Cotton. There's Drew Joyce, head coach for St. Vincent St. Mary. His team 5-0. and oh. You know what? That Oak Hill game was actually their closest game of the year so far. And they won that thing by 20. And I guess you may be wondering, why does he keep pressing when clearly his team is, is just far superior to Strawberry Mansion? He, does, he doesn't want his team to get lax. You know, he, he wants them to just keep playing basketball. A lot of times, just about, you, you mentioned a 20-point win over the number one team in the country. So most of the competition that they play against is going to be inferior, but that does not mean they should back off what, how they've been taught to play and how they can be the best team they can be. It's the other team's problem if they can't keep up. And eventually, of course, he's got to clear the bench and, uh, and let some of the other guys play. 6'4", junior Joseph Carraway making the first free throw. And the second. Not a lot of points so far tonight for LeBron James. Only four, but a ton of assists, solid defensive play, and overall court presence have all been outstanding. And meantime, on the other side for Strawberry Mansion, we've talked about this a couple of times, Maurice Rice has not scored a point here in the first half. And most of that is the St. Vincent St. Mary defense against him. He's looked at a lot of different players, but on the other hand, he almost looks like he's frozen. He is totally out of his game and uh, doesn't seem to have any kind of answer as to where he can find some scoring. A little bit over a minute left before halftime. Romeo Travis, 6'6", six, six senior. Now Brandon Weems, there's Drew Joyce and a travel. Uh, the son of the coach, Drew Joyce the third. Turning it over again. 112 left in the second quarter. 
what Gerald, Hen uh, Gerald Hendricks, the coach of Strawberry Mansion, was saying you know, about a week or so ago. He was asked all these questions about this upcoming game, and he said, hey, we're not putting a lot of emphasis on it. You know, we're not, we're not going to treat like uh, LeBron James as the second coming. The big reason for that was he had two other games this week and didn't want his team to get ahead of itself. Here's James hopping through the lane. LeBron James with the steal, the move, and the dunk. And Strawberry Mansion calls timeout. <laughs> this is what he seems to really like to do, just lay in the weeds in the back of that press, anticipating so easily when that pass is going to come. And then this is, wow, pretty nifty crossover against Maurice Rice. And then barking and jawing at the crowd all the way back. Six points and five assists for LeBron James. The dunk there. Down to 58 seconds left in the second quarter. St. Vincent, St. Mary leading by the count of 35 to 15. There's the uh, LeBron James support group. I asked uh, Drew Joyce, uh, the coach of St. Vincent, St. Mary, if uh, what they thought of the Palestries ever been here before. He said no. That the practice, I, I guess it was yesterday, the first time they had ever been in this building. Of course, heard about the history and the tradition and all those things. They're quite impressed by it, but uh, certainly not even a little bit intimidated. It used to be a day, John, when a lot of visiting teams did not want to come to the Palestra. Mm. First of all, the, the fans are so close to you. They never felt that they were the teams were going to get a fair shake from the referee. So in many cases, you had a leg up against good visiting teams right off the bat. You know, we saw the stats there on LeBron James. Boy, here's a guy whose stats just do not tell the story. Maurice Rice missed on the three. James with the rebound. St. Vincent, St. Mary on the move. And the near steal by Joseph Carraway, but a foul on Carraway. 34 seconds left in the second quarter. It has been all Irish in the first half. St. Vincent, St. Mary, the fighting Irish from Akron, Ohio, in control right throughout, slapping up a full court pressure defense that has baffled Strawberry Mansion. And then uh, add in LeBron James, and it is a 20 point game. And Mansion has just been unable to show its game at all so far tonight. And, and now LeBron James is doing maybe a little bit too much talking with the crowd right now. And that particular section down in the left-hand corner getting all those people against them. Good pass by James. The open look out of the right corner. Rebound to Romeo Travis. And now 10 seconds left, and the Irish can play their final shot. Joyce weaving through the lane. Put it up. No good. Whistle on the way in, and we've got a foul against the Knights. You know, it's one thing to have attitude and swagger and a little bit of arrogance and confidence, but then again, there's a, you can step over the line where now it, uh, it it turns what could be potential fans that could be eating out of your hand mm. against you. But this is a this guy's 17 years old, will turn 18 on December 30th. He's got a little swagger to him, Oh, he's he? got the <laughs> swagger, but I'm just saying he could he could probably turn it all down a notch or two and still uh, be even that much more appealing as a player. You know what? Nowadays, though, sometimes it no, seems well, like the less appealing you are, the more appealing well, you are. You, you, you know what I'm you, saying? You, you make a good point. It's, <laughs> you know, a lot of times fans do like that, and we all know what we're talking about, about who we're talking about there. <laughs> we are at halftime. We've got uh, some interesting stuff. We're going to talk to Jeremy Treatman, who is the guy who organized this entire event at the Palestra and gave Philadelphia the opportunity to see LeBron James in person. We've got an inside look at Maurice Rice, although he has really struggled in the first half and we'll take a look at some LeBron James highlights from the first half right now let's go courtside Greg Murphy standing by Greg all right thanks guys coach uh, it looked like your full court press really caused some problems for strawberry man well you know that's what we do we play 94 feet we believe that you know we're going to make teams play the full length of the court we believe hey the easiest buckets are the ones you get in transition and it helps our guys it helps get them going we still we're not shooting the ball very well and I'm not happy about that but other than that we play real hard all the talk is about LeBron James James, of course, but you've got to be really pleased with your supporting cast today. Hey, we're hey, we're a team. I don't care what anybody says. We have a great player, but we're a team. We're a great team. 
Best of luck in the second half, Coach. Guys? Very much. All right, Greg, halftime it is. St. Vincent, St. Mary in complete control, leading by 21 points. This is actually the biggest lead they've had. A 21-point margin at the break. Coverage continues on CNA. Stay with us. Well, all kinds of Philadelphia basketball legends in the house. You can see right there, Allen Iverson has just made his way into the building to check out the second half uh, and check out LeBron James, who they're calling the best high school player in the country. Well, guys, Maurice Rice obviously struggled a little bit in the first half, but he is part of a long tradition here in Philadelphia of great Philadelphia basketball players. He hasn't scored any points yet today, but he will break Wilt Chamberlain's public scoring record at some point, and he'll be another legend in Philly basketball. Strawberry Mansion High School is smaller than most of the high schools in the city. They don't even feel the football team. But they're in an area of the city known for producing tough, street-style basketball players. And right now, they are home to the biggest thing in city high school hoops in almost 50 years. That's because Maurice Rice goes to school here. And right now, Rice, a prolific scorer on the court, leads the way as his Knights look to win their second straight public league championship. It seems like every year, like, the public league just get easier, so I don't think it should be that hard for us winning another championship. We still got a nice team this year. I don't see no team in the public league that could beat us. A little cocky, perhaps, but Rice has the numbers to back it up. 26 points a game, seven rebounds and three assists. And that's why Strawberry Mansion head coach Gerald Hendricks is so happy to have him around. He's not the biggest kid in the city, but um, I think he'll play the most all-around game for you. He plays almost every phase of the game. Um, he helps bring the ball down. He, um, like, rebounds. He's, he's out in the front, so he's uh, on uh, defense, you know, strong. Um, he's just an all-around player. He's much stockier than the typical basketball player. Looks like he could do very well on the football field. But basketball has always been his game, right from the start. We've been playing ever since I was about three or four. Then I started playing in schoolyards, tenant under leagues, at recreation centers. When I was like 11 or 12, I started saying like that I was really good and people was saying it too, like telling me that I could make it. So that just made me want to work harder. And the hard work has paid off with big time programs like Connecticut, Rutgers, Miami, and George Washington recruiting him to play there next season. His future indeed looks bright. He is a great scorer, but he's a basketball player. He's a guy who is mature beyond his years in school. He to totally understands how the game is played, and he's able to use that to his advantage. I like to be in a nice college, playing basketball, then playing in the NBA one day. But right now, Rice is focused on leading his team to another public league title. And oh yes, breaking the all-time Philadelphia high school basketball scoring record held by Overbrook High and NBA legend Wilt Chamberlain. Rice should be able to break Wilt's record of 2,206 points sometime in the next five games, and he is ready for the moment. It feels great to be uh, about to break Wilt Chamberlain's record because the record been up for so many years, and there have been a lot of good players that have been playing in the public league and haven't broken the record. Now I got a chance to break it, so it's so good to be able to break his record. Welcome back to the pleasure with the guy that really has made this all happen, Jeremy Treatman, the promoter of this event, the Scholastic Play-by-Play -play Network. You're the president. You got to look around this pleasure, and, and, and it's got to be pleasing to you. It's shocking, even though we knew it was a sellout going in, but just to see all these people, to hear the buzz, see how loud the crowd was, Maurice Rice's first stutter step, and LeBron's moves, his passes, uh, this is just wonderful. It's so exciting. Any surprise that the Philadelphia fans are strongly behind Strawberry Mansion and giving LeBron uh, some of the Philly booze, if you will? You know, I like that. You know, they, wanted, they were behind Strawberry Mansion tonight. I wasn't exactly sure what was going to happen. They're sort of cheering LeBron, sort of booing LeBron. I think they're just enjoying LeBron, and they wanted Strawberry Mansion, obviously, to, to do better, as do I. <laughs> the Scholastic Play by Play Network does a lot of these events all over the country. Are you seeing the success of events like this more and more each year? Uh, high school sports really taking charge. 
Well, this is obviously my most successful event numbers-wise since my first event on January 2nd, 2000, which you were at Camden Roman Catholic at Temple. Um, I guess this will be the trend uh, because people want to see these great high school stars anticipating that they'll never get the same in college because they're not going to college. That's what they're figuring. That's what everyone's figuring with the LeBron James. He hasn't told me that personally, but it's a great assumption, especially what you're seeing him do tonight. Um, so I'd say, yeah, that's what, that's uh, definitely a trend, and we're looking forward to the events in Ohio State and Dayton and Greensboro that I'm doing, and I'm sure the people in the other cities are looking forward to those other events. Now, this wasn't the only game here at the Blesser today. This was actually a quadruple header. What happened earlier in the day? Well, Simon Gratz won. They looked great. St. Joe's Prep undefeated. They're the surprise team in the Philadelphia area this year. We had them ranked 10th or 11th in the whole area to start the year. They're 8-0. They're number one in the area right now. Cardinal Doherty really gave it to Chester. So in addition to Strawberry Mansion, I'd say six of the top seven or eight teams from this area have played tonight. So All right. It's been great. All right, Jeremy, congratulations. Thank you. We got more coverage coming up. Second half coverage. It is 36 to 15 right now. St. Vincent St. Mary with the lead over Strawberry Mansion. All right, welcome back to the Palestra in Philadelphia. It was all St. Vincent, St. Mary behind LeBron James in the first half. And as you see, they've got the 36-15 halftime lead against Strawberry Mansion. Welcome back. This is John Gurevich alongside Matt Gukas. First half, LeBron James not putting up terrific numbers, but doing a lot of really good things and setting up the tempo for his team. Yeah, the modest number, six points, five rebounds, five assists, but that does not even come close to telling the story of what a talent this young man is. And, of course, uh, this young fella, Corey Jones, had a terrific first quarter with all ten of his points there. LeBron James found him for a couple of long jump shots. You saw that little drive in the lane before and Delton Morgan Hines the leading scorer for Strawberry Mansion and it seemed like the only good looks at the basket for Strawberry Mansion was when they got out on the fast break and got some kind of a look at a layup or got to a free throw line. You see the halftime statistics Strawberry Mansion shooting only 25 percent from the field really struggled and Maurice Rice who we've spent a lot of time talking about deservedly so had zero points in the first half. Oh for six from the field for Maurice Rice and coach Gerald Hendricks and the ball club have to find a way just to get him get him going get him a, a field goal some way to, to see if he can put up some points he's capable of exploding uh, against anybody because of his ability to shoot the ball from the outside and shoot that little in between shot but we have not seen it here in this first half all right we're getting ready to take a break and then when we come back we will have the third quarter of action from the palestra 36 to 15 the score Welcome back to the Palestra. This is John Gurevich with Matt Kukas and Greg Murphy. Set to go third quarter. St. Vincent, St. Mary in control. And that's one of the stories. You know, the big difference there, not, you know, we mentioned before, LeBron James' numbers not all that spectacular, but they don't need to be. He just does so many other things out on the floor. And the, the problem, Maurice Rice, not only is he not scoring, he's not doing anything else for his teammates to get them a good shot. And, you know, that sometimes happens to guys who rely just so much on scoring the ball. Now, his coach told me that he doesn't really want to be a point guard, but yet he can handle the ball, he can make plays, but he'd rather be on the scoring end. But when you're having a night like this, you've got to find something else to do to help your team compete. St. Vincent, St. Mary, five wins, no losses. They've been winning games by an average of more than 40 points a game. Ranked number nine in the USA. Coming out on the floor now with Drew Joyce and Corey Jones at guard. Sheehan Cotton at center. Romeo Travis and LeBron James at forward. And then for Strawberry Mansion, a team with seven wins and one loss. One of the top teams in the Philadelphia area. They've got Devon Mead and Maurice Rice at guard. And in the front line of Delton Morgan Hines, Tracy Worley, and Terrell Mathis. And right off the get-go, Maurice Rice almost threw a pass away, but recovered by Morgan Hines. Then in the post, knocked away by James, recovered by Mathis, and he gets fouled by Romeo Travis. Well, first play for Strawberry Mansion trying to run a pick and roll situation. This is the, the back end of it. As Travis goes up, tried to, felt he got all ball on that play, but uh, enough body contact for the foul. But in a pick and roll type of play with Maurice Rice and Bob, terrific trap for Sheehan Cotton. And LeBron James, I think there are a lot of uh, college and pro teams who would like to defend it that way. Mm -hmm. Again, we, you know, we keep talking about how good this 
St. Vincent St. Mary team is and you know again you got to keep it all in perspective as to what the competition level is and, and all of those kinds of things and sometimes you make the comparisons way too much to all time greats to Hall of Famers to great teams and things like that you, it uh, really gets out of perspective very quickly all part of the fun yes <laughs> that's right within reason but yep. obviously a lot of hype surrounding this this whole TV tour for this team. Corey Jones with a dozen points. 38 to 16. Now a 22 point lead. And a foul here on the Irish. John, you think about it, all the exposure, not only the, the teammates of LeBron James and, and what it means to them, it's a, you know, it's a unique experience, something they'll always remember. It could lead to a, a college scholarship in some cases, and also the teams playing against them. It's, uh, you know, it just doesn't happen every day. Sold out to Lester, where, uh, you know, you're putting your, your game on the line and in front of people, and it's, it's not an everyday game in your small little 300-seat uh, gym. This is Corey Jones, Romeo Travis, the O board. St. Vincent, St. Mary in control. Early in the third quarter here at the sold out Palestra. And Romeo Travis is going to fire up a three, and then Corey Jones is allowed to go in and get a rebound. And the Irish will inbound. People that see LeBron James play all the time say he often plays to the level of his competition, and that doesn't necessarily mean down to it. It's just that he does whatever is necessary. Uh, even here, his first outside shot of the game from beyond the arc. But against tougher competition, he'll do more going closer to the basket, which he did against Oak Hill. When his outside shot wasn't going, he just went to the offensive boards and just cleaned up there. But he doesn't have to do it tonight, so I'll let his teammates play. Tracy Worley driving in and missing. He has not had a field goal, and he is a key part of the Strawberry Mansion team and will be through the course of the public league season, but he has struggled tonight, and then a foul at the other end. It is on Morgan Hines. Real nice look by Drew Joyce the third, the son of Drew Joyce the second, the coach, kind of keeping an eye on LeBron James running the left wing, enabled him to make that bounce pass going in in the right. You, know, you try to keep a close eye on that release of the shot of LeBron James. And you know, some people say that see him a lot say it sometimes gets a little flat and shoots the ball out in front of him. But from what I've seen, even though he's one out of four from outside, the release looks pretty good. And the rotation on the ball looks very good. Number 13, Michael Mitchell checks into the next lineup. He replaces Tyrell Tapas. 43 to 16. The Fighting Irish in complete control here. If you had LeBron James in the NBA, what position would you play him at? Uh, j just body size alone and talent. He's a small forward. Here he is. Michael Mitchell, who had just come in. You know, welcome to the big time, Michael. Got in LeBron's way, stepped in front of the train, and disappointed the crowd a little bit. No telling what would have happened here had he not been fouled. That looked like it was going to be the windmill tomahawk, which may have uh, blown the roof off this building, despite the fact that the uh, pretty large majority of the fans not all that happy with this St. Vincent St. Mary team. One more look from this angle. It's a good hard foul to prevent that dunk. But you asked me the question, John, small forward, but get the ball in his hands. I think he used the phrase before the telecast. He's a BP. He's a back of ball player. Just, let him, just put him out there. He'll, he'll figure out where he can help the team the most. Now, is he going to be able to step in and dominate in the NBA? That, nobody having the crystal ball. Nobody really knows. Nobody has really done it before coming right out of high school. Get it inside to Morgan Hines. Romeo Travis with the block and the foul. But you know, stepping in and dominating from the get-go isn't really the test. If you look at Kobe Bryant, who came out of high school and averaged, what, eight points a game his first year, which is, is almost hard to believe now, in retrospect, that Kobe at one time only, quote-unquote, averaged eight points per game. Yeah, but first of all, Kobe did not have the type of body that, that he obviously has now, and LeBron James has, so he was a, a smaller, thinner version of all of this. But don't forget, he was going to a team that was supposed to win the championship, Shaquille O'Neal. 
O'Neill had just come over as a free agent from Orlando. Eddie Jones, as a big guard, was already there. And Ann Iverson hit her in attendance. Nick Van Exel, who dominated the ball quite a bit. So Kobe had to come off the bench and got uh, played sparingly, really. And he really had to fight and battle for his minutes. And he made all the mistakes that you would expect from an 18-year-old. 47 to 18. Through Joyce with his first field goal. LeBron starts to come racing out, but as he does, we've got a whistle. Yeah, Allen Iverson on hand today. A couple of uh, celebrities scattered throughout the uh, the crowd. A lot of people don't realize how difficult it is come to come in in the NBA. Even if you're a 22-year-old player that has gotten four years of college, it's a it's an eye-opener. Alley-oop to Temp. And the big hold there to once again prevent. I get anytime you're playing against a guy with that talent, you say no layups or dunks for LeBron James. Make him shoot some free throws. Much better from the line this year for LeBron James. At 68%, shot just at 59% last year. And LeBron clanking the second. All right, 5 12 left in the third quarter. 47 to 18. And here's LeBron out of the right corner. The three in and out. Rebound Sheehan Cotton. He hands it off. Ball laid in by Preston Sims and a foul. Uh, St. Vincent, St. Mary just putting on a clinic. And uh, the road gets tougher for them. We talked about it. They have some intriguing games coming up. Their next couple are against teams rated in the top ten in the USA. They play Ohio State rival Brookhaven of Columbus. That game is going to be at Ohio State at the uh, uh, next weekend that game is and then January 4th they play at Pauley Pavilion in Los Angeles against Modern Day which is uh, currently ranked in the top five in the USA Today poll. Inside the five minute mark in the third quarter. Strawberry Mansion has shown little of what made them publicly champions in two of the last three years. They have just not been able to pull anything, anything well, together tonight. Obviously, they got a size problem. Nobody did deal inside. Of course, LeBron James hasn't gotten in there, except for one dunk early in this game. Romeo Travis has had a field day inside. And they're just not, they're just not in the same ballpark. Oh, boy. Bruce Rice had a chance to get on the board. Here's LeBron spinning, riding, and missing, but a foul. And you got to feel a little for Maurice Rice. He, he of the 2,000 plus points. Spin dribble by LeBron James handles the ball beautifully. Not only for a big man, for any kind of basketball player, has complete control of the ball. Started playing with a group of his friends in the fourth grade. Also played a lot of football as a kid growing up. It's a good thing he got out of that. Yeah. <laughs> he has been solid from the beginning of his high school career. And last year was uh, dealt a touch of reality when he broke his wrist at a very important time when uh, you know, playing a lot of these all-star games and all-star camps. And... Uh, Obviously, it uh, it broke him up, but it made him realize how tenuous this whole thing can be. That was a, a broken wrist that certainly healed, but there are other kind of injuries that basketball players have all the time that uh, can really set you back forever. Which is one of the big arguments why it makes so much sense and, oh, yeah. and why it's so smart if you have this kind of talent to, to skip the whole college basketball circus and go right, go right to the NBA he, circus. He might even <laughs> skip the whole high school circus. <laughs> well, a lot of people say he would have been the number one pick in the NBA yeah. draft last year. I think he would have. And uh, Not to take anything away from Yao Ming and how quickly he's progressing for the Houston Rockets. He's, he's an outstanding player, but I think... 
still the hype had started last year on uh, LeBron James, and all the uh, NBA teams in the lottery were certainly intrigued. And I definitely think he would have been the first pick. And don't forget, LeBron James does come back to the CN8 area in a couple of months. He will be in Trenton at the Sovereign Bank Arena as part of the primetime shootout, which is an outstanding tournament as well. And in that one, St. Vincent St. Mary is matched up against Westchester High School of Los Angeles, another strong national program. And uh, very likely that game will be brought to you on CN8 as well uh, during NBA All Star weekend on that Saturday night, February 8th. So uh, stay tuned as uh, LeBron James and company continue to uh, travel throughout the U.S. Time out taken here as uh, number 20, Willie McGee, got tied up by the Strawberry Mansion defense. So three minutes and three seconds left in the third quarter. Strawberry Mansion has been out of this game just about from the get-go, 55 to 22. We've seen some nice things from LeBron James. And take a look at some of the, the traveling this team is doing. We talked about some of the games. And then at the Sovereign Bank Arena on February 8th, in Trenton, New Jersey. Should be an exciting weekend up there. And again, there have been some of the uh, the hand ringers who have wondered about the wisdom of putting a high school team on tour like this. But you do give athletically these players a chance to play the top competition. Uh, educationally, I think travel is, is an important part of learning sure. to the degree that they're not missing many classes and, and they can have the kinds of experiences that they would have no shot of having otherwise. And then you also have the fan component. People are just really enjoying well, seeing this kid play. Well, well, people are curious. You know, it's one thing, and we said this earlier, to, to see him on television. He, he's shown a few cracks in the armor with some bad shots here in the last couple of minutes. I don't understand what that, what that is all about. But, uh, you know, th th this is the, the other thing, John, is the demand. You know, I mean, will people you know, want to see it after you know, blowouts like this? And, you know, they've seen him. Yes, he's very, very good. And now let's see what he can do on the NBA level. I think it's going to be the approach by most people. But that should not take away from the enjoyment uh, for these players who are getting an opportunity to... Uh, as we've said many, many times, play on this, this kind of level in, in, in great buildings, in front of a lot of fans, and in many cases on television. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, the palestra is packed. Yeah. I mean, we've been here for a lot of big five games with big crowds, sold-out crowds, and they are jammed in here tonight. And it's a 33-point game, and everybody's still here. So I think they're, they must be still waiting for, uh, I think they sense there might be a couple of more spectacular plays in the back pocket of LeBron. One and one here. This is uh, junior forward Preston Sims at the line for St. Vincent St. Mary. And the front end is no good. Three down to Michael Mitchell of Strawberry Mansion. Maurice Rice with the ball still has yet to score. Came into the game 80 points behind Wilt Chamberlain's all-time Philadelphia high school scoring record. And we have to feel for him as he remains 80 points away from that mark. And he'll be one happy camper when this experience is over. And uh, he's going to need some help uh, from his coach and his teammates to get this behind him and forget about it and uh, quickly move on. Drew Joyce, an undisciplined shooter, cranking up another miss. And then the ball ahead to Tracy Worley, who glides in and commits an offensive foul. Tracy Worley is a pretty good basketball player, too, and he, like Maurice Rice, has been able to accomplish really nothing in the game tonight. He's got that uh, very slight, thin body, but again, he can tell his body not form yet, so he's unable to avoid contact there, where a, a special physique like a LeBron James you know, is able to do that. That's, that's the big difference. And then LeBron posting up Maurice Rice and scoring out of the box and getting fouled. It's kind of a dangerous time for uh, Coach Drew Joyce and St. Vincent St. Mary. With a humongous lead, the, the guys that have been playing most of the minutes, uh, you know, the mystery has gone out for them, and they look like they've lost some interest, and that's when you get yourself in trouble. First of all, you, the bad habits come out, you get lax, you get lazy, and uh, sometimes that's when you get hurt as well. Still 2.09 left in the third quarter, and James completes the three-point play. 
Well, if uh, the outside shot is his weakness, I mean, he certainly has form on the free throw. No question about that. But here's Maurice Rice. James out on him. The three layoff. Very uncharacteristic for what is a very good basketball player. Brandon Weems on the left of three. And Rice collects a rebound. Six feet tall, maybe 6'1", Maurice Rice. Some interest from Atlantic 10, Big East caliber schools. Might wind up going the junior college route. And a steal by James. Here comes LeBron. And a foul, which will disappoint the crowd from behind on Tracy Worley. Yeah, even Allen over there, I think, was hoping I let him go in there and do something. But that's the third time, at least in the game plan, it's the one thing that uh, Strawberry Mansion has been able to do, and that is keep LeBron, LeBron James from uh, winding up and uh, really throwing one down hard. I'll tell you, and we haven't seen the good alley oop passes that they were able to complete against Oak Hill that are, well, that are so exciting. Yeah, but you know what? I know they're exciting to fans and announcers, John, but. I think Drew Joyce, the coach, would like to see as few of those as possible. When called for, fine and dandy, but I've been kind of impressed the fact that they're not just flipping it up there wild and crazy-like, which is a sign oftentimes of a team that's out of control. Because, again, the simple little pass and the layup is just as good. may not be as entertaining, but it's, uh, believe me, John, I know it's 2002. Mark Heisler, the writer for the Los Angeles Times, but he was telling me at halftime now, he says, you, you must understand, it's 2002. Too. Yes, it is. I understand that, but there's still a place for, uh, as Larry Brown likes to say, playing the game the right way. I think mm. he said that a few times. Yes, capital R, capital W, the right <laughs> way. Scramble on the deck, and they say jump ball here. We're down to a minute 10 in the third quarter. Strawberry Mansion has committed 23 turnovers tonight. They mm. scored 22 points. And a lot of that due to the pressure of uh, of the Irish, but also just to kind of uh, throw their hands up, not, not, know, not knowing what else to do, just, just throw the ball around, in many cases, just careless passes. Drew Joyce misses from the perimeter. Rebound Maurice Rice. Let's see if Rice can get something off here. Three-point shot. Got it. <laughs> Gotta feel good for the kid. What a what a tough night for Maurice Rice, and that, he's got the the sweet feathery jumper, and it just he's just not been able to take his shot tonight. And finally drills a three there for his first points of the night, and then immediately answered on a three by a 6'4 freshman, Marcus Johnson. Well, you knew coming in it was going to be a tough task for Strawberry Mansion. I don't think we anticipated it would be quite as lopsided as it has been, but it has been St. Vincent and St. Mary in control the entire night and from the first minute. Nice spin move down the baseline by Marcus Johnson, and we are now three quarters complete. The lead has mushroomed up to 40 points, and we've got the final eight minutes coming up next. See what, uh, if anything, LeBron James has coming up as Maurice Rice finally scores his first points of the game. All right, three complete, 65 to 25, fourth quarter coming up. Remember this from 1999? Well, we're still growing. Football on the radio. Including 10 Strath Haven games. Football rules. Football rules. Football. You guys don't get it. It's a basketball network. It's a football network. It's a basketball network. Football network. Basketball network. Football. Basketball. Relax, guys. Relax, guys. Hi, I'm Jeremy Cheatman, president of the Scholastic Play-by-Play -play Network. This year we'll be airing 75 of the top high school football and basketball games in the Delaware Valley on the radio, including all the top teams and top players. There goes Kevin Jones again. He lowers the ball on two players. Griffin, slam, dunk, that will clinch it. Dustin Pichotti and Central Bucks West, state champions again. Juan ahead of the pack, left-handed plus for Wagner. Football. Basketball. Really? We want girls basketball. You're going to do girls basketball, right? <laughs> 
This is John Gurevich with Matt Kukas and Greg Murphy at the sold-out palestra tonight in Philadelphia. Folks came to see LeBron James, came to see some good basketball. They've gotten an eyeful of LeBron, but the game's been a blowout from the get-go. And now into the fourth quarter with St. Vincent St. Mary ahead, 65-25. to 25, And Maurice Rice with the basketball and just three points on the night. And lost it as we went up against LeBron James. We have seen LeBron and Maurice matched up head-to-head -head for much of the evening. And the matchup has gone completely in favor of Maurice, or in favor of LeBron James. Open jump shot for Matthew Johnson, a 5'8 freshman. So Drew Joyce, the coach of St. Vincent St. Mary, coming back with his starting unit while his team is up by 40 points. This is 275-pound Sheon Cotton <laughs> with a little bit of a move. <laughs> and a big powwow there, chest bumping and dancing around. Sheehan Cotton does not get that many opportunities to score. He has his role on the team, and you can imagine what it is. It's taking up a, a good amount of space in the paint. We'll get some things on the offensive board. His teammates very really happy anytime he gets a field goal. Maurice Rice, a little crossover move, and he opened himself up for the three. And see that? He's starting to see a little of this game, but it's just so late in the festivities. As LeBron threw that one away, the long pass down to the baseline. And, and Romeo Travis, the man that, that pass was intended for, he and LeBron James they have a running commentary as the game goes on, as LeBron James gets in his ear and is very demanding of his teammate and friend. Crowd buzzing a little bit as Maurice Rice finally gets it going. Here's LeBron against Maurice. Crowd on its feet. Three-point shot. Got it. <laughs> he chased everybody out. Clear out. I thought he was going to go to the hoop. Oh, no. It's showtime now. Maurice Rice missing, but the rebound tipped in. I don't know what took four quarters, but Maurice Rice is in, and the crowd is on fire. LeBron James answering back. He missed it. And it is it is now officially one-on-one -on -one time. LeBron James rattles it at three. Obviously, it's garbage time with the spread of points now, but this is a different kind of garbage time. This is, this is mano a mano. I'm going to show you what I got, and I don't care if you show me what you got. And a whistle, and what do we have? A foul <laughs> on St. Vincent, but I, I don't know if I've ever seen quite this turn of events before. Well, there have been, you know, remember the uh, the Bill Bradley, Cassie Russell one? I don't even know where that one was, but it was a famous one. Dominique Wilkins, Larry Bird. Don't get me wrong, I'm not putting these guys in their class, but it's that same idea, one-on-one. -on -one. Bryce against James. Maurice gives it up, and then the shot put in by Joseph Carraway. of Strawberry Mansion. Where were they for the first 24 minutes? Rice knocked it away from LeBron James, and then the over and back violation, and they're going to turn it over. Or are they? They say, no, still St. Vincent St. Mary's with the ball. We have no... And Maurice Rice finally getting back into action, and LeBron James answering back. Uh, John, obviously the crowd here at the Palestra, and I don't think anybody has left the building, and that's really weird when it's a 40-point game. But they are enjoying this to the hilt, but there are some traditionalists, there are some purists, John, that might say, what is this all about? Is this the, is this the right way to play basketball? Is this teaching the kids what basketball should be? And that's a legitimate question. Rice, the baseline follower, and he would go to the line. Matt, you're, you're squirming. You're a little uncomfortable with this. I, I, I hate to admit it, John. There's a weird part of me that's getting a kick out of it, but there is a, a, a bigger part of me that says, no, -uh. that's not, that's not what, what is intended when for high school, well, any kind of basketball, you know, on any level. I, mean, I don't want to belabor the point about playing the game the right way, but 
It's a five-man game, and LeBron James has certainly demonstrated that he can play that part of it extremely well and has no trouble getting his teammates involved. So he said, well, why not give him a little rope, give him a little leeway, let him, let him put on a show a little bit. Coming up at the five-minute mark in the fourth quarter, the uh, crowd has certainly responded to the uh, little one-on-one -on -one theatrics we've seen from both sides, from both stars here in the fourth quarter. LeBron gives it up here, and then Sheehan Cotton in deep offensive foul on uh, Sheehan Cotton. I did have a thought about a week or two ago, one thought. <laughs> lingered a little I'm, bit. I'm happy about you know, that. All that talk about who's better, Tracy McGrady or Kobe Bryant, considered the two best normal-sized basketball players in the world. I, I said, to him, let's settle it at the All-Star game. Now, it would never happen in the All-Star game because the other uh, eight players wouldn't stand for it because, again, they, they would not like it. But instead of letting him Maurice Rice does it again. <laughs> This is what we came expecting to see all night. I mean, it's a shame that we're seeing it at this stage in this. See, for me, this, this is still thoroughly entertaining. I'm, I'm loving this. I, and, and really came in anticipating that Maurice had been doing this from the get-go. But this, this is the kind of player who is challenging Will Chamberlain's well, record. Well, again, with his team down 40, obviously the, the, the shackles have come off and whatever pressure there was with Maurice Rice, and I think there had to be for the first three quarters of this game. But then now, able to put on a show, almost like a schoolyard type of game, and he is warming to the task, and LeBron James is loving every minute of it. Four minutes and 24 seconds left. James now has 23 points. Steals. But the crowd is, this is about the liveliest crowd I've ever seen in a 35-point game in the fourth quarter. <laughs> Delton Hines the rebound, and or Morgan Hines the rebound, and then inside a shot by LeBron James, put up no good. Strawberry Mansion crashing the glass, but can't make anything fall. Here's James on the move. Here's LeBron James, the dish inside. And the layup. Ho -ho! LeBron going coast to coast and then getting the assist on the dish to Romeo Travis. Silly me, John, but that's what I'd rather see. You know, <laughs> anybody dribbling between their legs, uh, raising up and shooting a 28-foot you know, jump shot. Doesn't take all that amount of, uh, of ability. Again, you got to be able to good shooter to make your fair share of them, but I'd rather see guys making plays for one another. That's just as exciting to me. Mm. And that and that really is still the most special part of LeBron nope. James's game and will continue to be. Inside the four-minute mark now, James clanking up a too long three-point shot. And then a traveling violation called on senior Willie McGee after he had gotten the offensive rebound. You can tell LeBron is dying to uh, get a little bit of an opening, although he realizes by now Strawberry Mansion is going to hack him and foul him hard if he goes in there to try to dunk. But I think he'd like to just throw one down to uh, get a reaction out of this crowd and from his teammates. Rice lifts up for the triple and drains it over LeBron James. A dozen points for Maurice Rice. He could put him up in a hurry. A dozen points in the fourth quarter, but that's all the 12 he scored all night long. It will, of course, be too little, too late, but the uh, crowd will be well, they, getting a little bit of show. And the second guessers will say about Coach Gerald Henry, why didn't he let him play that way in the first quarter? Why didn't he just come out and play that way? He certainly has a different hop in his step with the game totally uh, out of hand. And very importantly, Strawberry Mansion is not looking at that deadly full court press that they just could not solve. Way off on that shot by Maurice Rice. Inside the three minute mark at the sold out Palestra. I'll tell you what, if anybody's left, it hasn't been more than a dozen people who've walked out of this building tonight. It is still packed like a sardine tin here. 
And it has been the 6'8 LeBron James against the six foot tall Maurice Rice one on one throughout the fourth quarter. again. Studied by LeBron James. The clear out on the left wing. There's Delton Morgan Hines flipping up a three. O board. Joseph Carraway no good. Two twelve remaining. LeBron James just signaling to his coach Drew Joyce, I've had enough. Get me out of here. <laughs> Bryce out on the right wing, driving on James and floating in it. Oh! 78 to 43. Get it inside to James, twisting on the baseline, the reverse. Rebound tipped up, no good. Rebound Rice on the run. Here's Maurice Rice on the move. The crossover move, behind the back move. <laughs> Trying to let the people know what all the fuss is yeah. about him. Because, I, I mean, Maurice Rice showed nothing through the first three quarters that suggested he is as good a player as he is. And, and obviously in the first three quarters wasn't even coming close to this kind of performance and production that he has showed. And again, the, game, the whole tenor and uh, the tenor of the game changed in the fourth quarter and that little one-on-one uh, -on -one game basically broke out between LeBron James and Maurice Rice. So you see the numbers on LeBron, the scoring by quarters. 26 points total. And he is done for the evening, and uh, yeah, and one. as he departs, the crowd begins to turn and head for the exits. Well, he showed us some stuff. And uh, performed as advertised. Not so for Maurice Rice, who needed to get to the fourth quarter to come alive, and then really did, and had some exciting minutes in the fourth period. But by then, the game was completely out of reach. Drew Joyce, St. Vincent, St. Mary coach, is often asked how he thinks that LeBron James will be when he gets to the NBA and pretty much said, it, you know, no problem skill-wise, basketball-wise, he'll handle that beautifully. Not worried at all about that. What he is worried about is how he's going to deal with the, with the lifestyle that all of a sudden changes unbelievably and also the expectations that are going to be for LeBron James. Everybody's going to be expecting him to do what he did in high school in the NBA. That just does not happen. And of course, everything he does is going to be scrutinized. And they say, well, he's going to be making a lot of money, should be able to deal with it. It's easy to say that. It's very difficult to do when it's a, on a daily basis. And then all the responsibilities that you have with the media. And Practice and, and as, as Alan Ivan likes to say, practice. Yeah, actually, <laughs> practice. And it's one thing to you know heap praises on him, which are largely very deserving praises. Yes. But th there's no way he can overachieve no. in the NBA because the no. the bar has been set so high that he. I mean, no. at best he can meet <laughs> expectations. At best, yeah. and that's tough. I, I saw where one uh, Eastern Conference general managers they asked him what he thought. Of course, those fellows don't know either. But he said, I, I see him coming in averaging about. 15 a game in his first year, which would be better than, than any other high school guy has gotten it, with about seven rebounds and seven assists. Well, you say, well, that's like a kind of a poor man's Grand Hill now, and, which is very good. Grand Hill's a heck of a player, not the same player he was before his ankle injuries, but, you know, the kind of the bloom is off the rose for Grand Hill. Now, when it's an 18-year-old young guy doing it against established NBA talent, it certainly means a lot more. Well, you, you had Shaquille O'Neal in his first year in the NBA. You were head coach of the Orlando Magic. Now, he came in really as a considerably older 20 years old player with a much more developed game. Two years of college, a totally different game. Shaq being a big man and relied so much on other people getting him the ball. Now, of course, he could get his uh, you know rebounds whenever he uh, chose to do that. But you're talking about guys like Tracy McGrady, Grant Hill, uh, Kobe Bryant, uh, and Le uh, you know, throw LeBron James in in that area they've got they've got the rock they decide who's going to get it they decide when they're going to shoot it uh, which is a lot different than for a big man he has to rely solely on teammates getting him the ball down to 55 seconds left in the fourth quarter this is marcus allen a 
sophomore. Strawberry Mansion still figures to be a force to be reckoned with in Philadelphia Public League competition this year. And uh, St. Vincent, St. Mary, very much a force to be reckoned with on the national scene. And their next two games are against two marquee All-America High School teams. We talked about it a couple of times. Next weekend, they play at Ohio State's arena, 18,000, 19,000 seat arena against Brookhaven of Columbus, Ohio, which is a USA Today top 10 team. And then on January 4th, St. Vincent St. Mary playing in Los Angeles at Pauley Pavilion against a modern day team from uh, Santa Ana, California that is ranked fourth in America right now. And as we said, LeBron James and company returning to CNA territory on February 8th when they participate in the uh, primetime shootout, which is perhaps the best high school tournament uh, in terms of strength of field, size of tournament. I mean, you know, this one today was an outstanding tournament with some other games before this one, but uh, some exciting stuff coming up in Trenton in February. Well, that drive could really be fun to see this uh, this very solid team, albeit with a great star, and how they react to other good teams where they are actually challenged, because so far this season they have not been. The horn sounds. It is over. LeBron James performed as advertised. St. Vincent, St. Mary in complete control right from the start. And the final score, the Fighting Irish of St. Vincent, St. Mary High School of Akron, Ohio, 85. Strawberry Mansion of North Philadelphia, 47. All right, we're going to take a break and then come back. We've got award ceremony, possibly a word with LeBron. Stay with us on CNE. All right, welcome back to the Plester. We're with the uh, the man of the hour, I guess, LeBron James, uh, packing gyms wherever you go. What was the, the atmosphere like here at the Plester? Well, the atmosphere was real great. You know, all these people came out to watch us two teams play. It was great for, you know, for the community and for our school, for Akron, Ohio. And I like stuff like that. It was pretty fun. You know, we heard a lot about your game coming in. There's been a lot of talk about it, obviously. But what people maybe didn't realize was how involved you get the teammates in the game, your passing ability, your rebounding ability, and all that. Well, you know, I'm always team first, you know. Anytime I get my teammates into the game early, you know, they can be there for me late. And today, you know, I let my team get into it the first three quarters, and then I started getting my flow in the fourth quarter. You know, we was up by a lot, but, you know, anytime, it's all about the team, you know, team first. You had a chance to play against a Philadelphia superstar in Maurice Rice. He had a little bit of trouble in the, in the first half, got things going in the second half. What was that banter like out on the court? Well, I respect Maurice a lot. You know, he's one of the great players I ever played against. And, you know, if, I, I think I'm, I'm confident in him, and I hope he keep working. You know, if he keep working, he would be a great player. Last question. You had Allen Iverson in the house, a lot of other dignitaries coming in to watch it. Did you get a chance to talk to any of those guys before the game or after the game? No, you know, I didn't get a chance to talk to him. You know, I'll probably talk to him later on down the road or later on down tonight. Okay. LeBron James, congratulations on a big win. Good luck to you. Guys, LeBron James had a big game, had came on at the end. It was fun to watch him in the fourth quarter as well against Maurice Rice. Guys, all right, we have some uh, final statistics to uh, pass along on LeBron James. Came up with uh, 26 points, eight rebounds, five assists, a block. We got him down for seven steals. Was he uh, as advertised? What you anticipated? Well, I, I really didn't know, John. All I saw was uh, television last Thursday for a half and obviously saw some, some good things. And there is a difference when you, when you see uh, any great athlete in person. And uh, it, it was better than I thought. Uh, he, he just has uh, such a knack for doing the little things and, and makes it look so easy. And, of course, he obviously can make spectacular plays. Never got the real huge breakaway dunk that was really going to get the crowd going. But... Uh, Better than I thought. Obviously has a, has a tremendous future. Uh, it's going to be an eye opener, eye opener for him once he uh, once he gets with an NBA team and goes through a very tough summer and a training camp and all the two a days and all the responsibilities that go with it. Uh, unless he is Superman, uh, you know nobody can withstand that for for that long a time. So it's going to be very important for him. And he looks like he's going to be able to do it because he has the talent. As long as he controls things and tells everybody, take it easy. Let's take this slowly, and he's in charge of the situation. With all due respect to his organization and his coach, I think he'll be okay. Mm. But again, if he gets caught up and everybody directing him in which way he has to go, it could be a, it could be tough, and it would be tough.
enough for anybody. All right, we're going to take a break and come back with more from the Palestra as coverage continues on CNA. More in a moment. Or it's not the game that uh, you're, you and your Strawberry Mansion teammates wanted to have, especially in the first half. A little overwhelming a little bit in the, in the Palestra atmosphere? Yeah, well, we ain't come out playing our game. I think it was a f the first time for a lot of us playing in front of a crowd like this, and they wasn't used to it. So the second half, we came out playing a lot better because we was used to the crowd. What did Coach tell you in the in the locker room at halftime? Did he tell you guys to relax a little bit and just try and have some fun? Yeah, he was telling like, relax and play our game that we usually play. It was the crowd that was getting to some of the uh, players, and they was out their game, so we had to slow ourselves down and start playing a uh, regular game. The fourth quarter, you obviously looked like you were having some fun out there. Uh, got a chance to get your shot off. You got, you got some room out there. And you got Once you connected, did you feel uh, like you were getting your game back? Yes, yeah, because in the beginning, I wasn't taking no shots, so I came out in the second half taking some shots that I should have been taking in the first half, and I started hitting them, so I got in the flow of the game. Your impressions of uh, LeBron James. Uh, you got a chance to see him up close and personal. There's been a lot of talk about him. What was your impressions of his game? Well, he's good. He got an NBA body, so a lot of kids in high school don't have that type of body, so that was his advantage for some of the players on our team. What's next for you guys in Strawberry Mansion? You kind of put this one behind you, now concentrate on the public league, because you got a championship to win, right? Yeah, well, that's only one game, so we just got to start with the next one. That's Thursday. We play Bartram. I got to ask you about the record. You're, you're creeping closer and closer. I don't know what you finished with today, but uh, you needed 80 coming in. Do you think about that? Is that in the back of your mind at all? Or you, you're going to be happy when it's all said and done. Yeah, well, this was one of the things I was happy that is over with because it was the talk of the city. Now I'm just waiting for the record to be over with. And soon that will be over with. All right, Maurice, we wish you the best of luck. Thanks for coming out here. Maurice Rice from Strawberry Mansion. Guys, let's send it back to you guys courtside. And you see the total only 13 points added to the ledger of Maurice Rice in the game this evening, but he is creeping up and is now within 67 points of setting the new Philadelphia high school scoring record. Well, again, I was glad to see Maurice finally get going. It was going to be a, a real nightmare for him, and I'm sure he's not happy or pleased. There's no way they could be getting a whip that soundly, but uh, for a guy that, that comes in built as a scorer, he wanted to put some points on the board, and they, they, he and LeBron James put on quite a show there at the start of the fourth quarter. One-on-one, -on -one, just mm -hmm. firing away. It had to be about uh, 35 between the two, legs, dribbles between the two of them on every possession. Interesting, uh, intriguing game. Uh, not exactly what we expected at the Palestra tonight, but certainly LeBron James came as advertised. We want to thank our entire CNA crew, Tony Smith, producer, John Anderson directing everybody else on board. And the final score at the sold-out Palestra, St. Vincent, St. Mary, 85, Strawberry Mansion, 47. For Matt Gukas and Greg Murphy, I'm John Gurevich. Stay tuned to CNA.